Hello everybody, my name is Dave Pasquale. I'm the owner of Pasquale Aviation. Uh, yesterday I was on Facebook and I saw a post from a Viking owner. It was a uh, owner of a Lycoming powered Viking. I don't know if it was a 1731 or 1731 ATC, um, but the post was about the alternate air door uh, failing in the air box and causing the engine to run excessively rich with loss of power. Uh, they had a great in-flight photo of the airplane belching smoke out of the exhaust that looked almost like an early um, straight jet powered airplane um, in the amount of exhaust that was trailing behind it. Um, but what I have here in front of me today is I have a servo with the plate mounted on it for the air box. I have a normally aspirated air box and a turbocharged air box. Um, I also have an air filter here in the normally aspirated air box. Um, so I was going to talk about things to inspect uh, when you're looking at one of these air boxes during an annual inspection. Uh, so I will move the camera in here a little closer so you guys can see better what I'm talking about. And so this here is the servo with the plate and the air box installed on it. Uh, normally, if this were in the airplane, we are looking at the bottom side of it. You have two air ducts coming out of the sides here that would go to um, the cowling. And um, you can see here, this is the alternate air door here. The firewall is very close to this surface of the air box. And uh, I don't have, there's normally hitch pins. You can see in a, in a little hole right here, there's normally a hitch pin there to to secure the latch. I don't have them installed right now. I left them out just so I can easily disassemble it. And you can see here's what the top side of it would look like. And uh, I'll open it up and we'll take a look at the filter inside. So to get this open, you'd have to pull these latches out. And you can see this, this loop right here, the hole is blown out for the hitch pin. You should be able to see that pretty clearly there. Um, so that's kind of an issue to start with. Um, and then as I rotate it around and undo these latches, then I'll be able to lift it off. Now, if this were on the airplane, you're going to have a hard time sliding this down between the firewall and the servo. And you need to use some, you know, pretty good caution to prevent from damaging the filter. So I'll flip that over. This is the filter. This is a, a filter that Belanca has made and you can see it's like a screen material and it has a, a flocking as the filter media. When these filters wear, you'll be able, if you hold a light on the inside, you'll be able to see along the, the tops of these pleats, it'll look like window screen. You'll just be able to see right through it. Um, these filters are reusable. Uh, every annual you take and you know, flush water through them and use a little bit of soap to clean them. I use a chip brush, like if you look down in between these pleats here, you see there's like bits of grass and stuff like that in them. So I'll take a chip brush, which is like a horsehair brush, and just gently brush that stuff out and then flush it with water. Then this air dries. Uh, do not blow these out with a blow gun. Just after you're done washing them, just sit them aside and let them air dry. I don't put them out in the sun to try to force dry them. Uh, I'm told that that can cause the flocking to shrink and and cause issues with that. Um, so this is the air box here. This is the normally aspirated one. Um, and before we go further, I'll talk about the, the turbocharged one. So this is the turbocharged air box. And you can see it's pretty much the same except for the absolute pressure controller on the top. This valve up here, you can see it as I push it open there, that valve, and I'll show you the inside, that valve prevents overboosting the engine. So if you were to activate your turbos, like if you had a manually operated uh, turboed engine and you pull them closed on the ground at full throttle, this valve should be open unless you're at a really high airport. Um, so anyhow, the, the primary focus or the, the mo biggest offender of issues is this alternate air door. This one here has a pretty new alternate air door on it. And if you, if you open it up and you tug and twist, so you want to open it up and then 
twist it this way or pull in and out this way to make sure that there isn't wear in this hinge. The hinge is what fails. And as you can see, this is an aluminum hinge with rolled ends. It's not even the extruded kind, it's rolled. And then they cut, you, you can see in here, they cut sections of the length of that hinge out to accommodate the spring that holds the door closed. Uh, the idea behind this alternate air door is if the filter plugs, the door will, will blow open and allow airflow into the engine. So the engine doesn't quit as a result of the, um, the filter becoming clogged. Or in the case of one of my clients who had a turbo, and I'll leave him to identify himself if he chooses, was flying in hail and the hail plugged the inlets to the filter and uh, caused the alternate air door to open, which also dumped some of his manifold pressure um, because he was no longer getting turbocharged air into it, but the engine continued to run as, as it was intended to do. Um, on, on, them, on these doors, you can see this one, I have RTV over the fasteners to try to help prevent them from coming dislodged and getting sucked into the engine. Um, because this is inside the filter, anything that comes off of this goes right into the engine. If this hinge breaks, the whole door goes into the engine, which is what happened to the airplane in the Facebook post. Uh, the next issue, and, and this has a relatively new seal, you can see this seal right here from the factory is made out of a, of a foam rubber material. It's an eighth inch thick. Uh, it's okay on the, the normally aspirated ones, but a few people have replaced the turbocharged ones with something that's more like baffle material. And you see here, this one's got black baffle material on it. Uh, this one doesn't have the RTV over the fasteners, which I typically do. Uh, but what happens on the turbocharged airplanes with the foam seal is, is the pressure causes the foam, I don't know if I can even show it, causes the foam to roll. So let me see if I can position that around. It rolls in, if you can see my finger, it'll roll in like that, especially on this, this edge right here. It'll come inside, so it'll be on the wrong side of the airbox, and that'll, that'll pretty much dump your manifold pressure. Um, so you want to check the, the valve, the seal. Then other issues I see with these, sometimes these rivets that are in the corners of the, of the retainer ring for the filter, they'll, they'll pop heads off and, and the retainer ring will be loose. Uh, a lot of issues related to these latches. Uh, this is an earlier style latch here. Um, as I showed before, it's got the hole blown out. But if you look at the, the loop that goes around here, they wear in the corners right here. So you can even see this one has a little bit of wear right in the corner. If you look at the inside corner there, you can see a notch under here. That's where from where it contacts the tab on the other half of the, of the door or the other half of the latch. On later model airplanes, they welded these two pieces together because what happens is this, this loop breaks off and then when the loop breaks off, the piece leaves and then the door separates. If these are welded together, they're a little bit stronger and a little less likely to completely fail. Um, this air box here is that way all the way around. It's got the old style. I think the turbo air box has the newer ones. Yeah, see here? On the turbo, you can see it's welded together. The loop is closed in. Um, so that, that's a better setup. Uh, if you're changing these latches, those are the ones you want to go to. Um, but it's important to inspect the loops for wear and, and also any deficiency in here. On a rare occasion, I've seen a crack developing out of the, one of these rivets from one of them. Uh, that's also an issue. Um, hopefully you don't have that because I don't know how available these boxes are. Uh, you might have a better shot at a new one than a used one. The filters and, and uh, these filters here and the alternate air doors have been available through Alexandria. Uh, I don't know if they're currently available right now from them. I haven't tried asking. Uh, on the turbocharged airplanes, so if we turn our attention over here to the seal, this is 
off of a normally aspirated airplane. This seal right here on the turboed airplane sometimes doesn't work well. Uh, there's a lot of variation in the size of the box, and I've seen some where the where this this edge this edge right in here is what presses into this seal. I've seen some where that edge is out here on the lip and it'll be the same on all the way around. So it, it tends to push the seal into the air box. Uh, that, that's another way that turbocharged airplanes lose manifold pressure. Um, and another thing to look at if you're having troubles. And then also on the turbos, there's two silicone type gaskets in here, one on either side of the spacer plate, and those gaskets uh, sometimes also leak. Uh, so again, another place for, for your turbo guys to look out. So uh, one last thing with these, when you go to put them back together, a lot of the, the air filters here, I'll, I'll show it here, a lot of the air filters, this rubber edge, I'll find them where they're cracked. It's like if you flex the, if you flex the, filter too hard it splits that rubber or there'll be chunks missing out of it and damage that's from installing and removing the filter so if you put that filter in there when you're trying to install this it's not it's not like it is here on the bench where you can just plop it on top of it you have the firewall very close to to the back edge and it's made worse by the the nose gear well kind of comes over like this around there and it has a flange on it and then on top of that, on a lot of them, there's a, an asbestos or fiberglass covered, or it's either asbestos or fiberglass, and it's covered with an aluminum foil on the firewall. It's like a heat mat, and that adds more thickness to it. So, so you're more or less trying to slide this air box into position. And that, if I can tip this here, that causes, if you look at it from this angle, you're, you're sliding this along here, and this, this rubber catches on the edge of the, the air box. It'll be like that right there. And if you just force that in, you'll damage the rubber. On airplanes where it's excessively tight, it's helpful to take a piece of thin aluminum and cover over the air filter and then get the aluminum up over this edge and then slide that into place. Either that or sometimes if you come out from the side and go in, you, you have a little more room because you're not dealing with the lip of the wheel well, which will be in, in this area right there. Uh, so anyhow, uh, my hope is that you guys will watch these videos and you'll do um, some more thorough inspections of these parts so that we don't have any more failures like that. Uh, as I said in the Facebook comments, I, I work for Whitmer's for... 18 years and pr just prior to my starting employment with Whitmer's they had an airplane where the alternate air door failed and the failure of the air door happened right at takeoff um, which seems to be the most common failure um, time for that to happen it happened right at takeoff and the airplane lost engine power and I guess the air it was you know IFR weather conditions and the pilot was a low time guy in the Viking didn't handle the airplane uh, I guess as good as he could have and it took a steep angle down into the ground and you know severely injured the pilot and I think one of the passengers may have perished in the accident and uh, you know as a result it turned into a lawsuit uh, because the air door was a used part that Whitmer's had installed um, and it's a long story. It ended up that the insurance company settled um, for a pretty big amount of money, and I don't, I don't recall all the details of it, but what has stuck with me is that these parts need to be inspected at every annual and, and need to be done thoroughly. It's, it's extremely important that these parts be checked. Uh, so hopefully you guys will, will take that experience and do better inspections on these and we won't have any more failures of alternate air doors. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.